Were you ever a brony, Vosh? No, I, I found My Little Pony repellently twee and saccharin. I can't stand that shit. I have a pretty high tolerance for it, too. I mean, I, I, I watched all of um, She-Ra as much as I have, like, multiple problems with it. Uh, but, yeah, the MLP shit, no. I hate how unrealistically positive it was. I don't mind positivity. It's just twee bullshit. Also, I really don't like that style of animation when it's done professionally because it reminds me way too much of Newgrounds animations, that, like, flash uh, tweening style. So to see it being done in a professional work, like, makes me feel like I'm caught between worlds. What is your Shira OTP? I don't give a f Shira is not a good show. I don't care. Not for I don't form OTPs for shows I do like. Hey, here's a quick question, by the way. Why does everybody jump down the throat of Rebecca Sugar for reforming fascists in Steven Universe? But in Shira, they're okay with it. In in Shira, they literally reform the f whatever the the super white skin evil dude and Katra, who are both absolutely like fascists. Like, uh, Hordak, yeah, whatever, stupid fantasy villain name. Different generations? Not really, because they're hot. And Blue Diamond isn't? Get over yourself. Ridiculous. Because Steven Universe had to do it within the span of a song. But they, they didn't. That's not what happened. I honestly, the more I think about it, the more I think the way they handled the diamonds in Steven Universe was actually really responsible. They had them be, like, unrepentant fascists for seasons and seasons, and then in the big confrontation leading up to it, they slowly whittle away at the interests and will of Blue and Yellow Diamond, and they only do it because they consider Steven one of them. And then after all of that, they get to White Diamond, and White Diamond spends the last episodes of the show and all of the movie and Steven Universe future only being ambiguously good. Like, it's very obvious that they're still dangerous and they're trying to improve, but don't really know how to. Like, I don't think... I, like, I, hmm... I don't know. Man, that Lily Orchard video really did just, like, permanently poison the discourse when it came to Steven Universe, man. It's a lot better. <laughs> Hordak and Catra just had better fleshed out arcs. The end of SU was rushed. It was, but I don't think that their... Catra never got properly redeemed. She was a bitch. Come on. All right, whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me. Way to remind me there was a tanky on Twitter saying Kuvira from Korra wasn't fascist. Well, that's the secret to being a beloved fascist, is you have to be really hot, actually. Wait, this person follows me. Whatever. Didn't Catra literally end the world and the heroes had to stop it? I, I would honestly argue that um, Catra was more morally evil than any of the diamonds. The diamonds were like a unique kind of life that ruled over, like by divine will, ruled over all of the rest of the gems and didn't even consider organic life to be real. Catra was a living, breathing person who decided to continue being like genocidal. I don't know. There's not even like a perspective shift thing. The writers also treated Kuvira better than all the other villains. Yeah, man, wasn't that great? Wasn't it great how Zaheer, the villain of the third season of Korra, was an anarchist whose first move was to kill the corrupt and belligerent Earth Queen, and then their big move is they want to kill the Avatar because the Avatar is an unjust, like, centering of power in one person when the power should be distributed evenly to people, and then they locked him in a cave prison and then kuvira is just like hello hello i am kuvira i am lady hitler hello hello i am lady hitler hello uh i will build big robot destroy world hello lady hitler and then like and but but because she's like cute and vulnerable and stuff she gets saved and it's like oh look now we value life i'm telling you man that's all you have to do being a cute girl is all it takes that's that's the redemption ticket right there how the f do you distribute a power that somebody is born with because the Avatar only has that power because they were blessed with it by the, um, by the elemental spirits in the spirit realm. The whole point is that the Avatar is supposed to be a bridge between the Earth and the spirit realm, but the argument that Sahir makes is that that was, like, the fundamental decentering of the universe, and that, in reality, spirits and, uh, the living world should just kind of, like, merge seamlessly. Or, not merge seamlessly, that was more the season two villain thing. More like they just shouldn't be dictated by one person. Like, one single hereditary position should not be the sole link between um, the worlds. Uh, thoughts on Iman? First season was good. Iman was cool. I mean, you know, he was a hypocrite, but that was the point, right? Like, that was the... Like, yeah. I mean, he was wrong. So here was... Instead of, like, trying to help the Earth Kingdom into anarchism, he just kills the Queen and tells them, hey, do anarchism now? Yeah, okay, so he's an anarchist, exactly. Wait, you mean he doesn't see that far into the future and he doesn't realize creating power vacuums is actually going to lead to the rise of a worse power, uh, i.e. Kuvira? So he's an anarchist, yeah, so he's an authentic representation of the ideology he's meant to represent, yeah. They literally did that. They killed the Earth Queen and Kuvira took uh, her, her power, yeah.
The power vacuum was taken over by Lady Hitler. Hello, I am Lady Hitler. I am taking over the power vacuum created by an anarchist. Hello. Have you seen the Hilda movie? Yeah. No, he was genuine in his belief of no bending. Eh, I'm not debating it. Zaheer also becomes brain dead halfway through. Yeah, because they always do that with villains who have a good point. They do that every time, dude. Um, every every time there's like a radical leftist villain who has a good point, they have to go crazy. This The worst example of this was Bioshock Infinite, where you get along with the revolutionary black and brown people fighting against the white supremacist society up in the clouds in Colombia. And then like towards the climax of the game, you go to a different timeline where your character died earlier and was an ally of the revolution. And they're like, well, hold on now. You're not the guy we knew. You're not the Booker DeWitt we were friends with. Get him, boys. And then it turns out that actually they're super dangerous and evil and they just like kill a white baby or something or they try to. And then, and, and, and Elizabeth has her womanhood moment by stabbing the f leader of the anti-racist revolution to death. Like, Jesus f Christ. <sighs> if you could cut out that portion of Bioshock Infinite, you would raise the quality of its writing by like, like, like 200%. Like, that is like concentrated f dipshit. Catra wasn't operating under her own moral system when she did those terrible things. She was reacting under some BS view of the world through the lens of her trauma. Oh, everyone says that. That's Hitler shit. Hitler, you know, Hitler was a soldier in World War One. Listen, okay, Hitler was only acting out of the trauma. No, no, no. Like, you can do that with anyone. You know, people are a product of their environments. Like, oh, this person did a million evil things, did so because of trauma. It's like, it's, it's, it's like the, you know, my disability is a, is a, is an explanation, not an excuse kind of thing. The trauma of not being accepted. Into art school, exactly. Yeah, you think Catra just fell out of a coconut tree? No! Catra was the product of everything in the world that came before. <laughs> I don't think Catra's arc is meant to be conclusive by the end of the series. Yeah, but neither are the diamonds, and that's exactly what I mean. That's the point that I'm trying to make, right? Like, people with, with the Steven Universe diamonds, like, oh, they try to redeem the fascists, whatever. But it's like, well, they're not really redeemed, and also it's not over by the end. It's kind of like, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, uh, I don't know, up in the air a little bit. Apparently the reason you don't see as many bugs in your windscreen anymore when driving is because we killed them off. Yes, that is true. Uh-huh. Uh, the amount of bugs on Earth has decreased by like, I don't know, 60 or 70 percent within a pretty short length of time, like our lifetime, basically. I'm doing my part. Yeah, exactly. You know, we're, we're all doing our best to throw used car batteries into the lake. What'll birds eat now? Uh, well, there's less of those, too. Don't worry. It's balancing out. Bugs globally outnumber humans by like 16 times. By 16 times? Do you mean like to the power of 16? Because definitely not by 16 times. There are like probably a trillion bugs for every human. Maybe more. Well, sure, regular dude, but Stephen was wrong to do that. He was uh, having a normal one at that particular moment. Might be like 16 times in mass. Okay, okay, that's something.